So as we all know, the most important news of late has been the sacking of David Moyes. What we'll be talking about today will be... Thanks. Uh, okay, Man Unite, what? Okay. You know what, Let, let's take it from the top, people. Hi. Hi. Okay, so according to my writers, what we're going to be talking about will be on xenophobes. On xenophobes. Is, is, that, is that thing on? Xenophobia, the unnatural fear and hatred of hot Filipino babes. Of late, a number of keyboard warriors have been doing our country proud by raging all over the place about Filipinos trying to celebrate their Independence Day here in Singapore. So I think we should find out why they're so angry. As a Singaporean, I first would like to say that I'm not comfortable seeing any other national flags being rallied. March upon openly in the public, showing your nation's pride of your national history on our soil. This is Singapore. So first, some people are pissed off at Filipinos trying to celebrate their Independence Day in broad daylight in public. What? Let's find out what Singaporeans really think. If they do want to celebrate it here, right? Yep. Then, then by all means... Uh... Uh, I think it's fine to celebrate their own national day because they are honouring their country. I feel that Singaporeans are being a bit too reactive. Well, I mean, after all, it's not like Singaporeans overseas do anything similar, right? Where are y'all from? Canberra. Canberra! Mr. Lee said Singaporeans must treat others in Singapore the same way they hope to be treated overseas. Precisely, so if Singaporeans were to mock those foreigners who are celebrating the National Day here, then what about them? What about the Singaporeans overseas that actually do, does, does the same? But that's not all. Believe it or not, folks, these guys have even found even more things to take offence at. We are against them using the Singapore skyline in their logo for their Philippine Independence Day logo and posters, comma, Facebook page, comma, websites, comma, etc. Full stop. They've taken offence at other symbols as well, claiming these undermine Singapore's sovereignty. Specifically, the use of the Singapore skyline and posters like these. Well, if you ask me, I think that's total bullshit, man. I mean, undermine Singapore's sovereignty? What, Filipinos are going to come in the truckloads now and invade our country? It's total nonsense. It doesn't make sense. It's like, ah, I can't do this. Okay, okay. Let's just take a look at posters like these. Singapore Day. Okay. London skyline. London sovereignty intact. Skyline sovereignty. It's all fine. It's all good, you see? Right? It's okay. Maybe to us, to other people, they, they might be uh, claiming our landscape as theirs, but maybe to them, it's showing respect to us. It's just an image and nothing discriminating us, but actually embracing how Singapore has de developed over the years. Honestly, Filipinos are intimately familiar with our sights and sounds anyway. Honey, look! This is our land now! Honey, look at all the jobs we took! I think we should see where the intention of the independent thing come from. Is it rather to like say that this is our country or is it just to welcome that you know we are part of this country? Meanwhile, others have taken offence at the slogan interdependence and independence, saying that it is presumptuous and not endorsed by all. Which, I, I, I don't even... You see, you can't expect everyone to go around asking for permission to use that slogan. Hello ma'am, would you like some interdependence? Hello sir, would you like some independence please? Like, <laughs> come on! It's just a celebration of the close ties we have with our ASEAN neighbours. That's all. But then again, their responses do reflect deeper concerns. This could result in a zero figure in Singapore. Competition in resources. And as a result, we may feel that the problem you know, is caused by these foreigners. Has this been happening? Yes, it has. It is true that of late, a growing number of our population is coming from overseas. But get it clear. It is not their fault. They are merely a symptom and not the root cause of a policy. Thankfully, I know that most Singaporeans have more sense than to jump to conclusions. Instead, they think it is unjustified and shameful, as it should be. Xenophobic is a real thing in Singapore. And through education, it could be solved. It's their Independence Day, right? So, I mean, they are living here. I mean, they have the right to do that. Well, so it looks like only a small vocal minority has taken offence. And speaking of small vocal minority, we have one for you right here today. Of the dynamic duo, Muna and Herzi. Here we have... Herzi! I bet you thought it was Muna. You were hopeful it was Muna. Right? Where is Muna, anyway? She's not free, lah. I don't know what all this ruckus about that you guys are trying to make with the Filipinos. You're just bitter and upset. <laughs> 
that this community are celebrating something and you feel like, hey, you cannot, this is my country, you cannot celebrate such shit here. Bitch, please. You celebrated Singapore Day in London, Melbourne and New York. And people in Melbourne who wanted to come for the event who were not Singaporean, who were white, got chased out because they wanted free food. Who wouldn't get free food and wanted to get free food? You won't, man. Are we discussing um, the, the, the event itself? Are we discussing our aggression towards um, them coming here in the... I think we must understand that they are actually not mutually exclusive, they're kind of interlinked. Is that why one event can have such a huge backlash? It's because there is already an underlying current of anger, resentment. Exactly. So, first of all, Singaporeans, fix your problem because clearly it's an attitude problem you all have to face first and settle. Um, you are angry at the situation so that anything that happens, you guys are just attacking. It's so stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. Well, you see, I guess it's all about being nice and happy and, as he said, not being angry. It's about not having animosity. Singaporeans need to understand the divide between uh, the policies that they're angry about with our migration it flux right now and also they need to separate the fact that these people are not what they're angry at. You're not angry at the migrant people who come down. You're not. They're here to make a living. I will admit it, I'm a little upset when it comes to, um, you know, university entries, scholarship applications, job competitions. Yeah. Th these things would upset me because I am still a Singapore citizen looking to get all these resources and it's limiting in Singapore, right? Me too. I'm a Singapore but citizen. But at the same time, you need to think like a human first also, in the sense that, hey, these people are not the problem, the policies are. Well, he has a point there, you know. It's no point being angry at the migrant workers. We shouldn't be directing our anger towards them. And Correct! Like, okay, but the fact is, it is happening. Now, anything, what do you think can be done about it? What can Singaporeans do about it? First of all, get a life, uh, because you are clearly spending too much time on the internet. Um, connectivity and technology is so advanced in Singapore, that's why these people have nothing better to do. Make friends with people, and then you realise, hey, these people are actually quite nice. What? Hey, hello, Singaporeans, I read some comments, okay, they were saying these low-life third world people. If they are low-life third world people, I can assure you they are not. Now that you, are, you, you know, Muna and you have, are in a position of influence, yes. what are y'all going to do? Oh any ideas? God. Any plans? We have been from the get-go, even before this became a thing, even before there were like the riots. Since 2012, we've been, and we've been on this five years, so it's three years ago that we've already mm -hmm fought for things like a mandatory off day and that was before it was be it became mandatory Oh, is it the, the who run the world mates yeah. thing? Oh. Run the house mates, get your facts right, do your research The writers didn't do the research <laughs> <laughs> And then we, we fought for safe work environment in our mm. foreign um, ladies video mm. And yeah, recently we were talking about crazy in love disparity of crazy in flux It's about all the animosity and the xenophobia sentiments that Singaporeans have So yeah, we have always put out their messages in comedy so that Singaporeans can sit back, laugh, and realize eh, hey, actually why we hangry? Hangry is what? It's not even a word, sorry. My mind <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you have it. So even though there's a lot of um, vocal minorities, as I said earlier, about oh, you know, we hate foreigners, we hate Filipinos, get out of our country, all that nonsense. It's actually not that bad. And it's not a minority actually, there's a lot of people, you know. No, they just make a lot of noise, so they sound like there are a lot of people. There's one vocal minority to make so much noise on the internet. And make everyone look bad. Doing your country proud, guys. Well done. So, well, thanks for that, Hazi. No worries. Catch you soon. Do I go back under the sheet? Uh. The milk of milk. Okay, your chicken pox vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all, folks. Good night. Become smart and sensible Singaporeans who make bright and intelligent comments because we. Because we. Nah. nah. Olaf, 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 Olaf. To my friend so quiet Good morning They complain, say I'm awesome Burning alcohol for little in the unrest Have you ever talked? Oh. What?